Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Unrolling the Roller. I'm Chris Coates and in this episode I'm going to be dispelling the myth that long rollers don't work and why I love my 120 single roller so much and why I think it's one of the best guns built by Rob Allen. Stick around, this is going to be really good. In the last two episodes, I covered the 90 and 110 single rollers. Thanks so much for all the great feedback. With so many guys trying out the setups from the videos. So kick back, relax, get your favorite drink, and let's get into this next video. You hear it all the time on the interweb that long rollers don't work. In theory, there should be no reason why they do not. One of the reasons small guns work so well is that proportionately you can load more into them. Let me explain. If you can load 50 to 60 kilos onto the notch, then your loading capacity is the same whether you are loading it into a 90 or into a 120 centimeter long gun. So it's easier to load the right amount of energy into a smaller gun than it is into a longer one. Almost everything is scalable and the only variable is what you are able to load. And if what you are able to load is enough, which it probably is, then there's no reason why a 120 or 130 roller gun won't work. In fact, this 120 over here is one of my all time favorite roller guns and what I believe is to be one of the best um, blue water reef all rounders available on the market. If I could only have one gun, this would be it, making it pretty much one of the best off the shelf guns at the dive factory. The 120 is my go to gun when I'm guiding. I can sharp shoot fast moving rainbow runners and punch all the way through a big doggy's head on a second shot. This is also my go-to recommendation for clients coming to the subtropics you know, where they're diving and looking for jobbies and big grouper on the reef. This is lethal with jobbies and where there are jobbies there are usually bigger pelagics like kuda and the 120 has enough hitting power to take down most fish. This for me is the ultimate kuta or Spanish macro gun. Most of the time you can get fairly close and with the confidence that you have from a gun that is so consistently so accurate means that you can pick where you shoot the fish making it some of the best hunting you'll ever do. So the question is, why don't long rollers work? I think it's because of these two main reasons. The first one is obviously um, wrong band and shaft setups, and the second one is muzzle wraps. Um, both of these are solvable. On setups, I will go over what I've found to just work, um, and I won't cover all the wrong setups, but I will say this, you should not be hand loading a 120 single roller. Um, when you scale up a 120 from those epic 90 and 110 rollers, it's more than you can load by hand and you're most likely going to be using a 7.5mm shaft with a 16mm band and for that you're going to need to use a load assist. If you haven't seen the video on load assist, check it out in the link above. Um, with that you'll be able to load just about any roller gun on the market. The second main issue guys have with long roller guns is muzzle wraps. This is primarily because guys do not keep their shooting lines tight. And if your shooting line is slack, when you track your gun, the shooting line flops over the rubber and this is a surefire way to get a muzzle wrap. After loading, always double check and make sure your, your Dyneema shooting line is tight. Muzzle wraps is a fairly complex subject. Um, I would have to have a whole separate video to cover the subject. But that said, if you just keep your Dyneema shooting line tight, you'll almost completely eliminate uh, muzzle wraps with uh, roller guns. Let's get into the 120 setup. As always, our starting point with uh, any gun is what shaft you're going to use. And it, as explained in previous videos, the longer the gun, the greater the buoyancy proportionately, because all your components are the same, the handle, your reel, your muzzle. Those things all weigh the same, but the volume inside the barrel increases, so the longer your gun, proportionately more um, buoyancy you have in that gun. So that means that the 120 is fantastic with a 7mm shaft and will even take a 7.5mm quite well. When I first started using a 120 I used a 7mm shaft because it's better balanced than the 7.5. The 7mm 7, 7 shaft is also faster which is a big plus. Over time I've settled with a 7.5mm, the thicker shaft has less flex so I found it to be more accurate and I bend fewer shafts. But it's the extra punch and penetration that you get from the 7.5mm shaft is the main reason why I've stuck with the thicker shaft. 
The 120 for me is my go-to for big CUDA and you need to be able to get through a meter of fish, especially when you're aiming for those acute angles. I'm gonna to have to do a whole video just on those shots. So if you're using a seven and a half mil shaft, then the 16 mil rubber is the right rubber thickness. And for this, you will need to use a load assist. Using the same easy rubber formula of half barrel plus five centimeters, which gives you 65 centimeters of, on the 16 mil band. This is perfect for the 120. Um, I've also noticed in the comments and feedback from other guys from the other videos is that this formula has been slightly either too hard or too soft for the guys. This will depend on the rubber that you guys get and obviously I mean some guys are stronger than other guys but if you're using good quality natural latex rubber you'll find that this will only vary a centimeter or two so use the half barrel plus five as a guideline start there and if it's easy take off a centimeter time if you're finding it too hard maybe just get a longer load assist try a 40 or 45 centimeter load assist um, you'll be amazed at what you can actually load easily on a single roller so what makes the 120 carbon roller so great compared to the other guns i've already covered if you remember uh, my comments on the 110 with the seven and a half mil shaft that I felt it was just a little bit too heavy for my liking. Um, it did shoot really well, but now with the 120, it's got just that little bit more buoyancy, so the 7.5mm shaft isn't so much of a problem. And if you pair the 7.5mm um, shaft to the 16mm bands on the 120, it gives you a fair bit more power and range than you would out of a, a 110, and it still is super accurate. I think this extra power and range that you get actually exceeds what I would consider as a practical shooting range for most fish. So you always have a little bit more performance than you really need for, for most fish you're going to be pulling the trigger on and that's an ideal situation to have. So what is practical shooting range? This is the practical distance or range that you shoot fish at. In my experience and going over years and years of blue water footage is that we all think that we shoot the fish further away than we really are. Most shots are within single wrap range. Go and look at most YouTube videos and see how many wraps come off the gun when the shaft hits the fish. Most of them will be well within single wrap range. GoPros don't help either and they make the fish look a lot further away than they actually are and what we see through our mask. If you've ever done a pull test and actually measured out the distance from the target, you'll know that 7 meters from the diver, which is approximately 5 meters from the end of the gun, which is actually single wrap range on a 120. Um, it looks quite close, but if you've taken a conventional 130, you'll notice that there's a considerable amount of shaft drop um, at that distance, and you'd have to actually compensate to um, be accurate. The 120 is lethal at this range, but it's, it's further away than you think in the water, and most fish are well within that distance. So for me, the 120 is still nimble enough for small fish and it has all the power and range I need for most situations. Now it's hard to talk about the 120 without also talking about the 130 single roller. The 130, because of the added buoyancy, is actually better balanced than the 120 with a 75 mil shaft. And the 16 mil bands at 70 centimeters using the same half barrel plus five centimeter formula drives the 75 mil really, really well with the same consistent accuracy that you would get out of the 120 roller. The 130's rubber at 70 centimeters is 370% stretch when fully loaded. This is important because the longer the gun is, the more energy you need to load into the gun for it to perform properly. This does however mean that the 130 is going to be that little bit more difficult to load than the 120. So for the smaller guys, I would suggest your load assist, don't make it the standard 30 centimeters, make it 40 or 45 centimeters and just make it easy for yourself. So the 130 is a fair bit more powerful than the 120 which kind of limits the gun on the reef. This is a purely open water gun for bigger pelagics. So if you're looking for a gun for Wahoo and bigger blue water pelagics the 130 is going to be your go-to. My personal opinion is that you actually don't need anything more than the 130 unless you're targeting fish well over 100 kilos. And if you consider the cost of other blue water guns in the market, you realize that the 130 single roller is definitely your best bang for your buck blue water gun on the market. 
Before I wrap this up, one of the most frequently asked questions I get um, on these videos is about aluminium barrels and will they work with rollers? Um, I realize that for most of you guys, you already have alley, alley guns and you want to convert those to roller guns and can either not afford to buy a carbon barrel or in some cases um, you can't even get them. But the plain and simple answer is yes, they will work. The 120 and 130 have more than enough buoyancy to float when the shaft's out on the surface. Um, the alley barrel, um, specifically the um, Rob Allen, is ext extremely durable. Um, and on a roller gun, your forces are actually on both sides when the gun is loaded. So there's no problem with flex or anything like that. And a conventional 16mm band gun where the load is all on one side actually puts way more force on than a roller does. And an alley barrel is fine. It's been designed for that. So there's no problem with the strength of the barrel. Um, the only problem is, is obviously the weight in the water. This will mean that if you relax, the muzzle sinks when holding out the gun. So you have to lift up the muzzle with the handle, especially when on the bottom hunting fish like jobfish. This is where a well-designed handle or grip makes all the difference. How much of an issue is this? Well, that will depend on the diver and their technique and where you're hunting. If you're hunting in open water or blue water, um, a lot of the fish you'll shoot, you'll be diving, you'll be chasing. In these situations, if you have good technique, as in you keep your gun in while approaching the fish and only extend out at the point when you see the shot, you'll probably not notice the lack of buoyancy and have too much of an issue with the grip. Lying on the bottom and having to lift a gun up smooth and quick for fish like jobbies and coral cracker, this is where you're going to notice the difference, especially if you've used a well-balanced gun in the past. Another thing to consider with heavy guns, it's like diving with a pendulum or a drop weight. But instead of leaving that weight behind at the bottom, you have to swim that weight all the way back up to the surface every single time. I guess this only becomes a real problem at deeper depths. And yes, you can compensate by taking some weights off your weight belt. The nice thing about it is that you can actually follow your gun um, down when, you, when you're diving down, which does assist you. So I guess it's not all bad, but remember you have to swim that weight back up every single time. And that is a bit of an issue. So with the 120 and 130, um, if an aluminium barrel is your only option, um, you can make it work for you. But I would maybe consider using a 7mm shaft instead of a 7.5mm shaft. That will lighten the gun up quite a lot. And if necessary, turn the power down on your 60mm bands if you're finding the shaft starting to whip, especially with the 130 where you're using a one7 meter shaft. So this pretty much sums up all the videos on the single roller setups and depends on where you're living and hunting. Um, you can have all your bases covered with two to three guns. Best of all, once you have one gun dialed in, if all your handles and muzzles are the same, it'll be easy to flip flop between the different lengths of guns without having to adjust at all. So that's it for this edition of Unrolling the Roller. I hope I've covered everything you need to know, but if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. The conversations become great additional resource to um, all the videos and help clarify anything that I might have missed or bring up that I haven't even considered. After all, this is a learning process for all of us. If you like these videos, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when uh, new videos come out. I've also included handy um, chapters in the description so you can easily go straight to the um, parts of the videos you want to see. Makes it great for sharing with your mates that don't have to watch the whole thing. They just get the juicy bits. Please also hit the like button. Give me a thumbs up and uh, share the video. YouTube really likes it when there's uh, lots of likes and shares. Um, more guys will get to see it. Thanks so much for watching and I uh, hope this video has been super helpful. Cheers.